Host of NFL Red Zone, Scott Hansen with Armin and Levac. Scott, the breaking news today, Geno Smith out six to ten weeks after being sucker punched by a teammate. He has a broken jaw. Your reaction? Bombshell. Unbelievably sick bombshell. We on NFL Network have been doing live training camp coverage for the past two weeks, okay? We'll, we'll do about 12 hours of live training camp coverage. And these little scuffles break out on the field. Some of them are little scuffles. Some of them get a little nastier. Usually it's to the point where was it pushing and shoving, pulling and pushing, grabbing helmets, or were there punches thrown? If there are punches thrown, that rises to a whole new level. You can say, oh, it's guys getting after it. It's teammates, even if they're teammates or whatnot. This, uh, and, and the news is still coming in, but this apparently was a sucker punch from a um, perhaps a defenseless Geno Smith, assuming obviously with no helmet on if he was in the locker room. Broken jaw, the, the Jets' season just changed right now from one moment. It, 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 it sickens me. I'm, I'm as competitive as anyone that there is. When I played football, yeah, I got into it with guys and stuff like that. You know when there's a line to cross, okay? And you never do something that you think you're going to injure your teammate. This sounds like something. I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, police get involved, if this sounded like it was an assault type of thing uh, from one guy to the next. And obviously the, the guy who uh, did it has been cut. But uh, just terrible news. Terrible news going into the uh, preseason opener for the Jets uh, when they really they already named Geno the starter, and so now Ryan Fitzpatrick, it's it's uh, his show to run for the next month to two months. Unbelievable. All right, Scott, and now to the most important question: How do you go to the bathroom when you're on the uh, host of the NFL Red Zone? How does that work? My whole career has been reduced to fans asking me, yes. but, you know, my wife wants to know, or my friend, my buddies and I sit around and we wonder, uh, <laughs> when do you go to the bathroom? Do you go to the bathroom? And the, the honest answer is this. Out of 17 weeks of the regular season last year, I think I took six or seven bathroom breaks. Now, that's a seven-hour show, no commercials. So most of the weeks, I made it through without stepping away from the set at all. Uh, my, my fantasy football uh, team name is the Iron Bladders. Ooh. So that gives you a little bit of the uh, of the background into how seriously, biologically, I take my job. Now that's some damn good insight right there. <laughs> now, when you go to the bathroom, do you make it to the bathroom or Gatorade bottle? Now, I've heard every joke there is in the book. People ask me, are you sitting on a commode? Is that your stool? Is that actually a toilet? Do you have a stadium pal with you? Do you, uh, you know, I've heard every joke there is in the book. Look, my only thing is when I go down the hallway, if I'm using the bathroom, I leave the studio, I tell my producer, hey, I got I to gotta go, you know, find me a spot. He's like, okay, we'll queue up a drive here and we'll be on this for a little while. So I go down the hallway. I still have my ISB, uh, the earpiece that we wear. So I can still hear the games going on as I'm going down the hallway. So I'm thinking, Please, no touchdown. Please, no touchdown. <laughs> no. I don't want to miss anything big. And then I'm also like, please don't let any of our big jumbo linemen have just been in the restroom when I'm going in. <laughs> right. You got to yeah. get in, get out, and nobody get hurt. In and out, no no, no fuss, no muss. Host of the NFL Red Zone, Scott Hansen with Armin and Levac talking only the important stuff here on 104.5 The Team. Scott, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you guys started NFL Red Zone in 2009. Did you know how revolutionary this was going to be when they first presented you with this idea? You know, I got to be honest. The, 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 the traditional answer would be say, no, you know, it's just blown up beyond my wildest dreams. I really felt it would pop the way it has. And here's why. I'm a fan. Okay, and if someone would have told me we're going to have something that that will service fans the way NFL Red Zone does, I'd been like, sign me up, I'll watch it, right? Because a, a couple of things. One, I think we love, and I'm sure you you guys have made your careers on it. We love being know it all in in American sports. Fans do. You, you want to be smarter than your brother. You want to know more about football than your colleagues. You want to you know, prove to everyone else, oh, I got an opinion and my opinion is the best, right? Well, you can't know it all unless you've considered it at all. And you can't consider it all legitimately unless you've seen it all, or at least the biggest parts of it. And NFL Red Zone is one-stop shopping to be able to see the 10,000-foot view of pro football. 
And the second thing is, that kind of coincides with that, is the proliferation of fantasy football. People want the instant gratification of sitting with their buddy, having a pizza and a beer, and elbowing your buddy on the couch saying, I got Jimmy Graham, he just scored a touchdown. You got Matt Ryan, he just threw an interception. And you're watching all of this in real time. It's just a thrill ride for seven hours. Scott Hansen, host of the NFL Red Zone with Armin and Levac. Scott, it's funny because, just being honest, I've never actually had NFL Red Zone on my TV my entire life, but yet I know who you are. If I saw you in public, <laughs> I would act like we're pros. Every, <laughs> everywhere I go, NFL Red Zone is everywhere. I mean, when you think NFL, it just coincides now with NFL Red Zone on Sundays. If, you don't, if you're watching the games and don't have NFL Red Zone, you're just completely missing out. I mean, you're, you're kind of the bomb.com when it comes to the NFL right now. Well, I'm not going to say that about myself. I will say this about the channel that I host is when we signed on the air – and this kind of goes back to your last question as well. The very first show, in the very first minute of the show, I introduced myself, introduced the channel, and I welcomed people to, and I remember my words, I said, we welcome you to the channel that we hope and we think will change the way you watch football forever. And over the course of the years, as we've grown, developed, and had word of mouth uh, just all the bouquets thrown at us, I've been told by fans continually that people won't go back to watching football the normal way. They want to watch every touchdown from every game, every key moment as it happens, and it feels like they're missing something when they don't. My Twitter feed on Sunday nights, okay, so after Red Zone signs off, I am fried after seven hours of commercial-free broadcasting. Basically, come home, slump on my couch, flip on Sunday night football, and then I'll go through my tablet and and you know go through uh, Twitter feeds. And the fans are telling me, Scott, we love red zone today, blah 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 blah. But this Sunday night game is so slow. And Sunday night gets some of the best matchups of the week, obviously, are on Sunday night. And yet people feel like it's touchdown, extra point, commercial, kickoff, commercial three and out it just it feels so slow because they're used to that thrill ride that we give them so it really has changed the way people watch football oh absolutely scott hansen host of the nfl red zone with armin in the back 104.5 the team scott we're, we we are still talking about the flake gate we talked about it all summer heading into yeah. the season now we're talking about it is this genius by the nfl or stupid <laughs> uh you know what i can't ascribe either one of those descriptions to it, and here's why. What I think it proves is that they say it's like pizza. Even when it's bad, it's good. So the NFL, even when there's negative news, and this has not been a pleasant thing for, for obviously not for Tom Brady, not for the Patriots, and really not for pro football. You've got one of the highest profile, squeakiest clean guys to this point being accused in a cheating scandal. Whether or not you think it's a big deal that a couple PSI came off of a football or he regularly did this or not, that's your own opinion. But the, the reality is it, the evidence points to the fact that seems to indicate he was involved with it and they were cheating and they knew about it and then they've been lying about it since. So it, you would think it would be a horrible black eye, but it's only increased the chatter about pro football for the last five, six months. So it's almost like the NFL has a little bit of Teflon when it comes to this type of stuff. Um, that you know what, even if it's a even if it's a little bit of a scandal and and he's going to get punished and it may or may not hold up, it just gets football in the frontal lobe of the American sports fan when there are no games being played. Scott Hansen, host of the NFL Red Zone with Armin and Levac, 104.5 The Team. Adam Schefter joined us yesterday. We asked him the most exciting thing going on at any training camp in the entire country, and he said Marcus Mariota and the fact that he's been through nine practices without one interception. Are we there? Are we really that excited about a rookie quarterback who hasn't yet played a game? I'll tell you what. Why not? Why not? And here, here's why I say that. Uh, the kid obviously comes with the pedigree, Heisman Trophy winner and all the touchdowns through very few interceptions at Oregon. But whatever the coaching staff of the Tennessee Titans is determining right now, all they have to go by is practices, right? So if you ask me, are we getting excited about the guy's first week and a half, two weeks of practices? Well, that's all he has in the NFL. And if he has not turned the ball over 
okay? Tom Brady's thrown an interception in Patriots uh, practice, okay? I'm sure Peyton Manning has probably thrown one. Andrew Luck probably has as well. I'm not even saying Mariota's going to be that. All I'm saying is if the Tennessee Titans fan base is looking for hope at the most important position on the field, and this kid comes in has been that careful with the football, especially for a guy who was not supposed to be able to handle an under-the-center under snap because he went out of the shotgun 98% of the time at Oregon, and he's been this clean this far, yeah, build your expectations up now. That being said, he's got to play in four preseason games, okay? And then he's got to play in the first few games of the regular season when the live bullets fly. So we can temper it when we see it in there. But the sample size we have to this point, hey, get excited because he's been, he's been producing in what he's been asked to do so far. So, Scott, my argument is that if Marcus Mariota is this good and he starts off this good in his NFL career, this is bad for every future first-round quarterback where we continue to raise the expectations of rookie quarterbacks in the NFL. Would you agree with that? Uh, okay, I would say yes, except you know, if someone says, oh, it's bad for the future quarterbacks, if I'm a future quarterback right now, if I'm one of the studs in college and I'm coming out, what I do is, if I'm that confident, I look at the NFL and say, you know what? It's no longer, oh, I was a first-round draft pick at quarterback. Well, I'm going to sit for two seasons and learn and be groomed by whatever veteran is on the roster. Uh-uh, baby. And that's not just Mariota or Jameis Winston if he had success this year. Matt Ryan came into the league and won as a rookie. Joe Flacco came into the league and won as a rookie. Russell Wilson, Andrew Luck. RG3 took his team to the playoffs as a rookie quarterback. It's possible, and maybe now it is starting to be expected. It usually never was from that position. You could come in as a rookie wide receiver, have an impact. A rookie running back was one of the easier, quote-unquote, easier positions to transition into. Maybe now it's quarterback, and it's a quarterback lead. What, what I think it's, it's fascinating about that is this. The Tennessee Titans were a miserable franchise last year, okay? They, they couldn't get out of their own way. Well, if they got the guy, if they got the guy, and that's the most important position on the field, you can look at a one-year turnaround for a franchise from one year to the next. How exciting is that? How exciting could that be for fill-in-the-blank franchise who's going to be drafting a quarterback this year to know, you know, we got some good defenders, we got a couple of playmakers, our line is pretty good, we just stink at quarterback. You go out and get the right guy, he can come in in his rookie year and change everything around. That's exciting to me. Host of the NFL Red Zone, Scott Hansen with Armin and Levac. Your What is your best fantasy football advice? Ooh. You know, if, if, if quarterbacks have been so marginalized in fantasy football, especially in PPR leagues, okay? I play in a PPR league with other people. Uh, you know, I will, I will let the quarterbacks go. I don't care if you think Andrew Luck is going to throw 50 touchdowns this year. I'll let other people take the quarterbacks off the board early. You, obviously, you've got to load up on your running backs and your receivers. I don't jump on tight ends too early. I, I don't know what Jimmy Graham's going to do this year in a new offense with a new team. Uh, I don't know if Rob Gronkowski can maintain that level of success, and it could be Garoppolo throwing him the ball for the first month of the season. So the, tra- the traditional path is the way I take. Load up on receivers, load up on running backs, pick one or two quarterbacks a little bit later, rounds five, round six, whenever you feel uh, good, and hope one of those guys breaks out. All right, Scott, you guys have uh, some previews going on of the NFL Red Zone over the next couple of days. Tell us about it. Yeah, you don't have to wait until September to see NFL Red Zone. So we're going to take chunks of preseason games, and we're going to show those to you uh, over the course of five different episodes. Now, you can follow my Twitter feed, at Scott Hansen. I'll put out the dates and times, but I want to let you know that the first one is coming up this Thursday, okay, in prime time. So there are three games at 7.30 Eastern time two games at 8 o'clock Eastern time on this Thursday and flip on NFL Red Zone. We'll bounce you around to these preseason games and see how some of the position battles are going on. Scott Hansen, thanks for being a part of Revolutionizing Football, man. We love it every Sunday. and Thanks for your time today. This was fun. No, no problem. Good to be with you guys and uh, can't wait to see you on NFL Sunday.